This is an original General Hydroponics Aqua Farm, and it was recently found in the attic of a house in Berkeley, which is where we started the company in the mid-70s. I'm going to guesstimate that this thing was put into this box in about 1976. So let's think of this as a time capsule and take a look at what we've got inside. This box has remained unopened since the 1970s. We used paper tape to package back then. General Hydroponics started in the garage of my house in the mid-70s in Berkeley. At that time, I was working at Lawrence Berkeley Lab. And in fact, I started General Hydroponics in 1976, the same year one of my projects at Berkeley Lab won a Nobel Prize in Physics. I was one of the team members. I was in charge of nuts, bolts, screws, and sandwiches. So let's take a look at what we got here. We got some instructions, a little bit yellowed. Packaging. A growing chamber. We made our drip rings and our lift tubes by hand, hand fabricated. Now talk about American made hand craftsmanship. That's a growing chamber. It came with a little air pump. It's amazing. This is 35 years old that we're looking at. Here in 2011, we're looking at a product made in the mid 70s. Air pumps have not changed a whole lot in all these years. Back then, we started our plants in something called a BR8. These don't exist anymore, and I wish they did. They're made out of recycled paper, and these are really, really good little root cubes. We had micronutrient. This is the original hydroponic nutrient system. With this product, it's possible to have a completely accurate breakdown of all of your trace minerals. We put our macronutrient in a dry form. Look at that, 6720 general purpose hydroponic plant nutrient by General Hydroponics, circa 1976 to 78. A dry powder, and look at that, it's still dry. So probably outperform any nutrient in the market today that we don't make. We're very good at that. And way back when, we knew how important pH control was, so we made a pH control kit. A little test indicator, which we made ourselves, of course. A little bottle of phosphoric acid and a little bottle of potassium hydroxide for raising pH. So you could test your nutrient pH and adjust it in the mid-70s using a general hydroponics product. And the reservoir. A little bit of packaging popcorn, that goes back a long ways. Here's the original reservoir. Tubing is a little broken down. This is a liquid crystal thermometer. You could actually tell the nutrient temperature using an LCD display here. Oh, and there's one more thing. Here's a bag of grow rocks. Substrate. You probably call this stuff hydroton or LECA or any number of other names. We were providing this to the hydroponic market in the mid-70s. It's a great substrate for growing plants hydroponically. It's been working for us for 35 years. We have a lot of experience. Just as we would do today, you take your reservoir, you put in the growing chamber, put them back together, and there it is. That is an original aqua farm made by General Hydroponics in the mid-70s. There's a little story behind these buckets. These cool little plastic buckets that we got in the mid-70s were actually made for the Mormons who used them to store food in mountainsides in case something calamitous happened to the world. Well, calamitous things happen to the world all the time, but they knew to look ahead and they used these cool little buckets to store food in. They're called space savers. They haven't existed for decades, except for this one. This is an original aqua farm, 35 years after I created General Hydroponics.
When we started this, nobody even knew what the word hydroponics meant. So I had to give a pretty good explanation of what's going on here. So here's a little instruction pamphlet. I had some photographs. Keep in mind, this was done before the days of computers, so everything was done on a typewriter by hand. I gave people an introduction, described the aqua farm, talked about setting up, about seedlings, a little discussion of nutrients, discussion of the right nutrient mix for different seeds, different types of plants, discussion of pH. Nutrients weren't as stable back then. Today our nutrients are very pH buffered. This comes from a time long, long ago. I couldn't get the same ingredients. I tell about the pH control kit, diagram of the system, discussion of light, still a very critical issue that people don't know enough about, discussion with, about temperature, both air and nutrient, important. Ventilation, plants breathe. It was important 35 years ago, it's important today. Bugs, always the curse of the grower. Farmers have always been fighting bugs. Preparation for replanting. After all, when this system has grown its crop, it's ready to grow another crop. These systems are timeless, they'll last for years. A place for you to write your notes. As a grower, you should always keep a notebook, you should keep good records of everything that happens in your garden. And more pictures, mixing nutrient, pouring nutrient, draining the reservoir, flooding, filling it and letting it bubble overnight so you can wash away the salts. Today we have products like FloraClean to help with that. Jack and the Beanstalk, well, he grew pretty big plants and an exotic Hawaiian plant for the imaging and the outside back cover. A wee bit yellowed. How about that? <laughs> How about that, eh? <laughs>